Hey guys, so I'm going to talk about the past game against Arkansas State that occurred uh, this weekend. And um, I'm just going to go over some uh, uh, key points of the game and uh, some of the things that I saw. And uh, um, I really want to emphasize, you know, um, we didn't do as bad of a job as some, you know, may think. And uh, we will need to improve in some uh, parts, however, and uh, I'm going to go over those. So, I want to start on the offense, which I thought was very positive, and, um, first of all, the most impressive part that I thought was the consistent run game. Now, obviously, last year, we didn't have a consistent run game because of problems with the O-line. Now we had 225 rushing yards and we averaged about 5.9. It wasn't the explosive run plays, but it was more about the consistent and reliable 5 to 6 yards that Trey Bryant and his committee could get. That was the more impressive part because with our pro style uh, offense and with Tanner Lee, he's not going to be able to be a dual threat. Therefore, we need a great running game which is exactly what we had and uh, Trey Bryant was one of the leaders uh, he had 192 yards with the touchdown uh, very impressive stats um, and then there's Tanner Lee I, I, I haven't seen a quarterback at Nebraska that's been this reliable and he stands out to me he really does because the, the, the big thing is that he didn't turn the ball over. That that's the most that's what Husker fans have been looking for, and I'm sure you you all know as well. That's why we switched to this pro style quarterback. He had 238 yards and two touchdowns. The the, the part that he could work on is 59% um, completion percentage. Um, overall, a very good day. I mean, for his first game. That, that's that's impressive. I, I, I can't ask more from him in his first game. And just, just to emphasize, no turnovers, that was very important. And also, Mike Riley didn't suspend uh, Stanley Morgan Jr. because uh, he can really help uh, the team with 102 receiving yards and a touchdown. He averaged, averaged 20.4 yards perception that's because of the big plays that he made with Tanner Lee this is a very reliable weapon and we're gonna need to use him against Oregon now I want to shift to the defensive side actually actually before I do that for the offense we were very um we were very good in not making bad decisions in terms of the quarterback position because if we had Tommy Armstrong or a Taylor Martinez we wouldn't be throws we wouldn't be seeing throws made like the ones Tanner Lee made and we also wouldn't see zero interceptions most likely I'm sure most of you would agree with that and I'm j I was very impressed with Tanner Lee's ability to uh, capitalize on some open throws and yes he did miss some throws but like I said it's his first game guys and he's just simply gonna miss some throws um, just off of you know game day first game day jitters now let's shift to the def defensive side because obviously a lot of people are very concerned and I do have some concern for the defense as Next week we play Oregon, a very good Pac-12 score, fast tempo scoring. That's what Oregon does. And I'll talk about more in depth our matchup with Oregon in the next video. I just got to say, you know, um, it really wasn't too bad. Like I said, Bob Diaco in several articles I've seen said that there are going to be growing pains with the defense. And that's absolutely fine. That's that's totally realistic. I didn't expect for the defense to come out blazing game one. If they did, that, you know, good for them. But 
it, it, you 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 cannot switch from a four three defense to a three four defense and expect for everything to just smoothly slide. Now he has the enthusiasm about him that I I really do believe that this defense will improve. It may take a couple of games, but I I'm really excited to see this three four because not many teams are used to this three four defense, and that's why I think it's very special. Now here's here here are the concerns that we need to go over. 415 passing yards allowed. J just think about that for a second. That that th I think the reason too is because we had a lot of uh, soft spots in our zones. It seemed to me. Um, it seemed to me like we, we had a lot of zone coverages, and, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's what I would have to say about that. But I, I'll tell you what, 82 rushing yards allowed, that's, that's not bad. For, for one game, 82 rushing yards, our, our defensive line stepped it up there. Now, now the, the point of concern for the most part is with the passing game. We have got to find ways to get pressure on the quarterback now now what I've been thinking about recently is when I was watching the game and we had the three a three four set three linemen with a linebacker coming to blitz on the edge the linebacker often went too far out and couldn't sack the quarterback that's what we need to work on if we're gonna send a blitz on a three four scheme but um we yeah we we've got to work on uh, you know coverages whether it's zone and man I, I think we will improve on the defensive side and we we sure will need to uh, if we're gonna expect to compete with Oregon next week but um I, I have complete faith in Bob Diaco it, it is gonna take a couple games to really you know uh, find our identity and uh, start to really compete on the defensive side but um. The overall performance with Arkansas State, um, you know what? It, I would say it was more so of a um, day for the offense over the defense. And uh, I think most of you would uh, agree with me. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll just have to wait, you know, uh, a couple games uh, for the team to start to settle down and um, figure out their schemes so uh that's it guys so um uh hopefully see you guys uh um next week at mazzy's uh the oregon game will be at 4 30 and uh just uh take care guys and um let's go huskers